Welcome back to Nash Valentine. We are chilling like a villain with Mr. Rin. I noticed your necklace. Oh, yeah. So let me see what that is. So this is a copper tooth. You pulled it out of straight from the mouth of C3PO. Oh my goodness. That's that a is sick. I think I was there for that. Yeah, yeah. It got a little boring. Deleted scenes. But I make way too many Star Wars jokes, so maybe we should just kill it. Ah, uh, he loves Star Wars. Kick your ass at Battlefront. Yeah. <laughs> is that allowed? Am I allowed to say that? Um, you can say f sh okay. bitch. I always um, defend it. Ass is in the you Bible. You can't say c Christians. You so can't okay. say c but okay. um, you can say um, <laughs> you baby out, whale know. vagina <laughs> if you want. <laughs> oh, God, I'm glad we got that off our chest here. I've so anytime you want to say baby whale vagina, in. you're more than welcome to go ahead and just lay it out there. Yeah. Tell us uh, how long you've been in Nashville, what brought you to Nashville. Cool. Yeah, I've been in Nashville on and off, I guess, uh, for about 10 years. Uh, but in a roundabout way, I went to school here at Belmont. And uh, sometimes that's a detail I leave out. Study guitar, failed the music department. And I uh, couldn't read music to save my life and thought that I was like kind of my end and I actually like let it speak to my self-esteem about my involvement with music. Yeah. So I kind of got out of it for a couple of years. After I graduated with a degree in religion, uh, I moved out to California. Religion? Yeah. yeah so let's... what were you, what were you wanting to do with that? So I grew up in a really conservative Christian home and grew up Same. like in churches and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I was going to be like, you know, like a preacher or something. Really? Isn't that weird? Yeah. So I moved out to, Cal to California and ended up playing guitar a lot more than I anticipated. Yeah. And the standard of guitar player there is a lot lower than it is here in Nashville. <laughs> and so I was like totally good and oh, like man, making man. all, you know, doing it all the time and staying busy. I ended up uh, finding my way back to Nashville, and uh, I guess the in-between is all the story of the record. Is so. that kind of when you went into um, your own music at that point, instead of playing for others? Like, is that when you kind of, when you moved back to Nashville, is that when you jumped in on your own project? Yeah, so I, I was pursuing a record and the idea of an album, and I contacted one of my good buddies in California named Daniel McKenzie, and I asked him, like, hey man, like, I want to do this record, like, what would it be like? And he was like, do you have any songs? I was like, nah, but it'll be good. He was like, well, if you don't have any <laughs> no, songs, but it's well, all gonna come do a to record. Me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> just like, just get in the river and get wet, let it come to you. Like, but I, I just had these unrealistic expectations. He was like, well, dude, if you want to do a record, like, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money and it's going to be a big ordeal and you should have songs. And I was like, all right, I'm going to have songs. So mm -hmm. I like started writing these songs. I started dating this girl. And as everyone has like that one relationship that just, really f you up. So I went straight into the whale's vagina and yes. uh, it got really messy from there. And uh, yes, man, anyway, the relationship. Can we pop in a whale vagina somewhere? Oh man, editing. We can edit in a whale oh, vagina? Oh man, special effects. Hold on, wait, isn't dude? Special. No, dude's not a whale vagina. Or... It's an elephant's ingrown butt hair. The great news is I needed songs and I ended up having a whole bunch of, I, I found myself as a writer. Yeah. And uh, I found how to write from my experience and not just write for the sake of writing. Yeah. I, I developed an ego as a yeah. human being that I had a story that I needed to tell. Yeah. And uh, whatever that means, yeah. like, I didn't need to tell it because it's important. I just, this is all that I'm thinking about. This is all that I really have to say. And it was because whenever the relationship ended, I was like totally blocked from like all text messages and emails and I had no idea how to communicate with this girl, but I was yeah. like, man, I bet you'll hear these songs one day. Yeah. And um, so I wrote those songs, and that desperation, I think, pushed me to a really, uh, it was a crucible yeah. forming me as yeah. a songwriter, as a lyricist, and that's kind of where, that's where badass, it all began. Man. Well, I've heard it, and, and it's definitely very relatable. Same, I mean, I've been through some shit like that, too, pulverized. That's and awesome. And then on top of that, let's just talk about, like, your buzz you got going on right now like mm -hmm. your n your ep is your first right yes actually it's a full length and it is my oh, first it's a, it's a full length. endeavor yeah, yeah. as a writer and it's amazing to me and humbling or whatever to think that a lot of people think i've been doing this for a long time yeah it, i haven't uh and i haven't i don't know the industry as much as i was plugged in in nashville before as a student like yeah. i don't know what the hell i'm doing <laughs> at all i wake up every day i was just telling some some friends out here like I kind of just take every day as it comes yeah. and I don't know what's next and I don't really know like uh, I, I know that I have to keep doing it I have yeah. some things on the horizon but it's 
as far as like handling the business side and creating the buzz. Well, that's why you've got like team members. Like that's that's why it's so important to have like a badass team, in which you do. You have right? a badass team around Tim you. Gray, that, Gray Scaler, Tim Gray, Grayscaler, Tammy. Yeah, that all have their own skill sets. You bring yours to the table, and they bring theirs to the table, and all interlock like a crazy legit puzzle. Yeah, vagina well. Yes, vagina well. Uh, Lighting 100 was actually a key part, probably, of getting really? people to know about me here in town. I got a text one day. I woke up. And it was from an unrecognized number, and it was one of the DJs at Lightning 100, and said, hey, Ren, this is blank. Like, we would love to uh, put your song in heavy rotation and feature you as local artist of the week. Shit, and I was like, they were like, is that okay, was the last question that they sent. And I was like, is that even real? Like, did they ask that? Of course it's okay. No, totally not okay, guys. It, like, charted in the Shazam top 30 charts or uh, something yeah, like that. Man. And uh, so from that one radio station, enough people pulled out their phones to figure out who it was. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really crazy to like just watch it all unfold and not really feel like I have any hand in it. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like, it's well, happening, I'm riding the wave. You've got you the know? creator and you've got the other um, experts, you know, kicking in after the, after the creating is yeah. done, you know. But the most like rewarding thing of all is not seeing numbers grow. It's seeing like, you know, people email me at midnight saying like, hey, this really touched me and yeah, yeah. it's helping me get through the shit that I'm going through. Right. And, uh, and I get that, you know, probably once a week. It's yeah, like, man, that's like Gatorade really, for the soul. Yeah, like, Gatorade, Gatorade for the Will's vagina. Gatorade for the Will's vagina. That's totally what Found it. Found it. Or... <laughs> oh! I've been actually dreaming. Well, now you're going to dream about Will's vagina yes, tonight. Yeah. tonight. I've almost died a number of times through animal attacks. What? So I Like would... bears? Is any of No, not any... bears. I'm waiting for the bear whales. to come in. <laughs> no whales either. Uh, when I was a kid, I was hiking in the forest. I had no glasses. So whenever I was like hiking or whatever, all of a sudden everyone starts screaming and they're like, stop, stop, stop right there. And I like don't even really hear what's going on. Yeah. And I'm looking around and the whole, everything I'm stepping on just looks brown. Snakes? I, I have no idea what it is. It's a rattlesnake apparently. <gasps> I was in Africa on a mission trip while I was still in the church phase. That's cool. And uh, we were on this little riverboat safari, pulled up on a shore, crocodiles hanging out, like right on the tip of the boat. And I have those little, remember those like, disposable cameras before yeah cell phones. yeah that uh, are waterproof they're horrible they i have so many terrible proof. memories of my dad snapping embarrassing I know. Of this. but anyway that's all i had and i was trying to get like a close image of the crocodile like the face detail and i got like inches chomped away at. from him and the dude chomped at me i don't remember what happened except that i heard a loud noise and my arm was like back here and the camera went Shit. flying and like, there was I almost lost pictures. my arm. I, I mean, it was so fast, I couldn't even think. And uh, farther down the river, uh, there was a hippopotamus that came charging out at us. That's on my bucket list. Oh my gosh. So like swim with a hippo. Without teeth, because they have like, teeth. <laughs> yeah, they would like Stronger than a shark, actually. They can chomp you in half. And yeah, they can chomp an hippo. aluminum boat in half. <laughs> like, that's how strong the jaws of a hippo are. So it comes charging after us, and it was like, you know, we're a bunch of American kids. We don't know what the hell we're doing. And uh -huh. It makes this really crazy noise that I couldn't make if I tried. It was like, like ah! Or it's something that sounds like you would laugh at it. And long story short, the boat, the boat driver couldn't get the engine started. Finally, while we're laughing, because we have no idea that it's like dangerous, because we're just yeah. little idiot kids, the engine starts and we all have whiplash as he just like Damn. slams it into gear and pulls it away. And he was like, dude, I don't, honestly, he, he had had friends that had like died from that apparently. What? Like I'm just trying to get back to the safety of yeah. whales vagina. <laughs> We're gonna ride that one out. So tell us what you have learned, the most valuable learning lesson that you can give up and comers or peers um, that you feel can help them along their journey in music. Yeah, I think um, what I've learned is that confidence comes from different places, right? Yeah. And for me, my confidence always seemed to come from the people around me. So if I was doing something really cool, I felt good about it, I would keep doing it. If I had people that, you know, voiced displeasure, immediately my confidence was crushed, leveled out. And you can't, you can't be that way yeah. as an artist. And, and when you're doing something, like I don't know where that like switch gets flipped or where the hardened confidence comes from. But man, if I could teach kids anything or teach anyone anything, it's just to keep going. Whatever is working against you, don't listen to it. Yeah. Like, just do it because it's you and because if you love it for the right reasons, not because people say that you're good at it, like, it'll carry you through. You'll mm -hmm. create something that will connect with someone eventually if yeah. you stay true to what you know is you and what makes you come alive the most. All right, guys, Whale's Vagina, we're out. <laughs>